everyone and welcome back to Cakes Cooking and More. I'm Marie Lockwood. This is our seven days of Halloween. Today's recipe is just a very, very simple sugar cookie. Um, you can see that it's fairly easy to do, but you really, really need steady hands, which mine tend to shake a little bit, so it's not really my forte, but if you've got steady hands, sugar cookies are probably the way you want to go. So let's see what we need. So you only need a few tools for this one. What we have here is, it's very pointed, kind of a sharp needle-like tip. You'll need something similar to that. Some scissors, some sugar cookies already made in the shape of a spider web. This mat you don't have to have. I just use it because it's easier to move my cookie without having to actually touch it so I don't mess up the icing. You'll need some piping bags black food color. We have our royal icing here and you'll want to store this in an airtight container like mine is. And you can see that it's very bright white. It's also very thick and hard when we first make it. Now the recipe for that is on the website and in the cookbook but we haven't actually done an episode on that yet. Then I have chocolate covered raisins and I needed something small and dark you can use some different candies or you can make it separate. It's up to you. Then I have some bowls and spoons and just some extra tools in case I need them. So the first thing that we're going to do is get our icing ready. Now the icing is fairly easy. The consistency that it makes is very, very thick. And that's okay because we're going to add water and thin it up a little bit. So we're just going to take our measuring spoon and I use a tablespoon at a time. You can see it's, it's very, very thick. It doesn't like to move a whole lot and that's what you're wanting. So we're going to put in three tablespoons of icing in one bowl and two in the other bowl. All right, now that we've got our icing into our bowls, we're going to close up our icing container. Now I did forget to mention that I've also got a bowl of water and this is a teaspoon. We're going to put one teaspoon of water into each one. And you just want to mix your water and your icing together really, really well. All right, this one is a little bit thicker. You can see that it stays on the spoon quite well. And the reason that you want it this thick is when you're doing outlining or if you're making shapes. Now you can alter it very, very easily. Both of these can be altered quite easily by just adding another teaspoon of water. So I'll just show you that real quick. If it's too thin, you can add another tablespoon of icing and get a different consistency. You can see that this one now runs really, really fast, like the other one. So this is more of a flooding consistency. If you were to put this directly on the cookie, there's a good chance it just runs right off the sides which is why you need the outlining consistency. You can see it runs pretty well. So you're going to work with your different consistencies until you get what you're needing. Now we're going to take our cookie, and I've actually got three here even though we only really need to do one. But I did three because you never know when one's gonna crack and break. These are actually the only sugar cookies left out of the batch that I made because the kids don't really care if they have icing, they love the flavor. Since I put a little bit of almond and a little bit of vanilla in my sugar cookies, they have a little bit of a different taste and the kids really like that. So they tend to get eaten before I can actually get the icing on them. So I've got a nice little spider web there. Now to get your spider web shape, the cookie cutter is like just a couple of dollars and I was able to get mine at my local grocery store 
but you can buy them Michaels, eBay, Amazon, pretty much anywhere that you can get baking supplies, you can find these. So you can see it's a nice little spider web shape. Then we're going to move our icing into our piping bags. Now you can see this one has a tip and there is no hole in it for a pipe or, uh, or a piping tip. Um, you don't actually need one for this. You can just use scissors and cut the hole as big or as small as you need it. So we're going to get these icing moved over and then we'll be back. All right, now that your icing is in your bag, Push it all down just like you normally would for a piping bag. And then just twist as always. All right, now when it comes to cutting the tip, you want to make a very small cut at first because we're going to go around the edges and outline the cookie. Then we will go back in and do the actual flooding of the cookie. This consistency of the two to one of icing versus sugar or sorry water will allow you to flood and outline with the same bag which makes it kind of nice all right so i'm going to move the camera so that you can have a closer up view of what i'm actually doing all right so i'm going to take my scissors and cut a very tiny hole the first time like i said first i'm going to be outlining so i want a very very small hole what you're going to do is just squeeze at the top until it comes out. I think I probably went just a little bit too small. So we'll cut just a little bit more. It's always easier to take more off than it is to try to put it back on. And you do want to get pretty close up in order to see what you're actually doing. You can see it's coming out. Now, if you have a problem like me where steady hands is a bit of an issue, I don't know what to tell you because I haven't figured out a way to get around it either. But I don't have the most steady hands. So I'm not great at sugar cookie decorating just because keeping that steady is a bit of an issue for me. But you'll see that I'm kind of lifting and letting the line sort of drop behind. And when I get too close and my hand shakes too much, I get kind of a jagged line. Some people find that holding the tip actually helps them with being more steady. And it does a little bit, but like I said, I just don't have the steadiest hands. Okay, now that we have an outline, we're going to take our tip and cut it quite a bit bigger because now we're doing what's called flooding, which is basically coloring inside the lines. All of you have done this pretty much your whole lives, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. You're just gonna go inside your line, and you can see I'm not going right up to my line because I really don't have to. It's called flooding because the icing will kind of slide and fill in your gaps. Now, once you have it mostly covered, you want to get the worst parts covered. And if it's a little lumpy right now, that's okay. Don't worry about that too much right now. You're going to take your sharp pointed tool. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also use um, little uh, needles or whatever. Whatever helps you get there a little easier. And you're just sort of encouraging the icing towards filling in those holes. And you want to move sort of in a circular motion. I'm just dragging a little bit of icing as you need to. You can see it fills in quite nicely and it stays inside the lines. So you don't have to worry too much about going way outside your lines. And as you can see, the fabric allows me to move the cookie quite easy without accidentally touching icing or anything like that. 
let's face it, we all prefer food that we don't touch a whole lot or that somebody else preparing it didn't touch a whole lot. Now, if you've got a spot where your line is a little bit uneven, you can encourage the icing a little more to try and even it out. I actually find this easier than trying to pipe a perfect line because, like I said, my hands aren't real steady. Okay, once you've got it, if you see air bubbles, pop those with the tip, which is also why a sharp tool is kind of nice. Now, you're going to take it and just, that will bring up any more air bubbles and just go ahead and give those a little pop. Now you want to set this to the side for about 5 or 10 minutes because it will harden, but you've got to give it time to kind of set in place and harden a little bit. So while that is doing that, we're going to prepare our black icing for the actual webbing. And we'll just set this bag to the side. Now you can see that it's open, but you can easily squeeze this out and use this bag again later if you want to, if you're one of those people that rinse them. I'm not, I just tend to throw them away. They are disposable bags, but you don't have to waste your icing. Now for our black icing, we need that a little thicker. We need it more line consistency because we're gonna make actual lines with it. Here's my tablespoon. So what I'm gonna do is three tablespoons and then one teaspoon of water so that it's a little bit thicker and more the consistency that I need. Make sure that you're always putting your lid back on. Air will cause this to sort of get crusty and hard and it will not do what you want and it'll take you a lot of mixing and you'll end up with tons of air bubbles if you don't make sure that you keep your lid on. So I've added my water and now it's just a matter of mixing. And it does take a few minutes to get it really mixed in there and you want to make sure you get that water completely in because the last thing you want is when you're piping to have water pouring out. Okay, so for our black, anyone who has ever made black icing, black cake, anything knows that your icing's probably going to go gray and it's going to stay gray for a while before you get your black. So you do have to kind of do extra with the black to get actual black icing. actually got the right amount the first time and it did take three drop, drops of the gel color. Now liquid food color you actually do need to use quite a bit more so keep that in mind when you're buying your food color. And you can see it's really kind of a dark gray but we're going to let it set for a minute because sometimes just setting for a minute will actually darken it. Okay, so I'm looking at it and it's still pretty much a dark gray. So I'm going to add just a little bit more food color and then do some more mixing. All right, now you can see that we've got a nice dark black. It's thick, but it's not too thick. It does come off the spoon. It just comes off in sort of drips. And this is what we're going to want for doing the lines that we're about to do. So we're going to move it into our piping bag in order to be able to use it. All right, now we have our black inside the piping bag. Now, this is a thicker consistency. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is cut a giant hole to get it to come out easier, and then it's not going to work for what you wanna do. So you're gonna have to cut a small hole, and you're gonna have to squeeze a lot harder to get this one out, just so you know ahead of time. And you can see our cookie, and I can see right here on the edge, it's starting to harden a little bit, and that's about what we want. So you're going to squeeze as hard as you need to to get it to come out. If you need to test it, do it on the side. 
Okay, and we're going to take this right at the tip of where our web starts. And again, I do not have the steadiest hands. If you've got really steady hands, great. That will help you a lot with decorating cookies. Since I don't, it makes it a little bit harder for me. They're not too bad, but they're a little bit crooked. And I've accepted a long time ago that that's just how they're going to be. Now, if you're ending up with a broken line, just go back and touch it up. It's from moving your hand too fast. Make sure that you're above the icing. Don't press down. We want the web to stand up above the icing. And because of the consistency, it will do that if you don't press into the icing. So you see where it's got blots? Those are from me either moving too fast, too slow, or my hand is shaking which it could be a combination of all three. Like I said, I'm not the best at decorating sugar cookies. I'm fine with the idea of it. I'm not the best at execution just because I just don't have the steady hands you need. The steadier your hands, the better your cookies will come out. That's just how it works. Okay, once we have that, what we're going to do next is follow the line of, oops, and that would be another thing that I have a problem with. I always get closer than I mean to get to the cookie. Okay, you're going to follow the line, the curve of it. So when you do your lines here, we're going to curve them in towards the middle. I'm going to touch one side, curve down, and back up. And you can see my lines are not great because I just, like I said, don't have those steady hands. And just turn and do each side. You can start at the outer edge or start in the middle, whichever one works best for you. Everybody's a little bit different. And you do want to make sure you're putting the same amount of lines in each section and connecting them. All right, once you've got your lines, have my chocolate covered raisins. And we've all seen spiders so you need a big back side of one. Set that on there and then I need a littler one for the actual head. And I'm actually going to set that at a little bit of an angle to make a head and a body. Now you can draw on your legs, you can draw on faces, however you prefer to do it. I just draw on some little legs. And then I turn it to where I can see the front of the front one. I'm just gonna put two little black dots for its little eyeballs. And I know spiders have more than that, but honestly, spiders freak me out a little bit and I'm not real thrilled about putting a whole big giant face on it because then it's just creepy. So think of more Charlotte's Web. She didn't have as many creepy eyes. I'm just putting a little bit of a mouth on it. And then I'm just going to lift it for you there so that you can see the little eyes and the little mouth. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, like I said, if your hands are more steady, your lines will come out cleaner and more even. I'm just not that great at it. I just don't have that steady hand. A lot of people can learn it after a long time of messing with it. I just... They don't get better for me. Okay, so that is it for today. You can see that it, the spider comes out pretty good. I made mine cutesy because I don't like spiders and they kind of gross me out. So I don't want a whole bunch of eyeballs and things on it. So um, the recipe for the sugar cookie is on the website and in the recipe book. It has a nice vanilla almond flavor. Um, and like I said before, the kids tend to eat them before I actually get them iced. So they don't need all the extra sugar on top. Now the royal icing, the recipe is in the cookbook and on the website, but we haven't actually done an episode on that yet. And for those of you who don't like the whole raw egg thing, I actually use meringue powder. So it doesn't actually have any raw egg in it. 
So I hope you enjoyed the show today. Remember to hit notification if you want to see all seven days of Halloween. And I'll see you next time.